this video, you will learn about the meaning of expression to a photograph and also the photographer. How are expressions actually presented and translated as a hybrid medium that is so capable of doing both documentation and also self-expression? It's good to see you back. I'm Gabriel Leung and welcome back to the 10th episode on visual language and photography, which I am super excited and I hope you are too. First and foremost, I just want to share support to all those who are affected by the war, especially the Ukrainian community. Just want to let you know that prayers are up and lots of love sending your way. May God protect. So if you are new to this channel, do check out the full playlist on visual language and photography down in the description below where I break down art vocabularies in photographic terms. And the mission is to help photographers and filmmakers like you out there to gain better concepts and grow as a creative image maker. So without further ado, I'm super excited to dive deep into today's topic on expression. For today's question, I want everyone to just take a moment and think about how are you expressing through your photography? When I was a little kid, my mom used to carry a pencil and a few pieces of paper with her. For when the adults talk about boring things over dinner table, I would have something to do. And if she forgot her paper, I would just take the napkin right in front of me. My drawings are pretty contrived, you know, generally outlined with uh, recognizable characters, objects, or things. And uh, when we moved to the States for two years, I was around eight years old. Um, my new art teacher told me a story about this one time uh, she met this angry boy who was really just mad at something. And all she could do was to give him a pencil and a sketchbook to, to do something with. She wasn't even sure what. And he was really drawing frantically on the piece of paper with no image in mind. Like, really just taking it out. But he wasn't really taking it out on the paper or the pencil as in breaking it. He was expressing through the medium. So we will now introduce three plus one tips to see how expression is conveyed through photography. Tip number one is the understanding of the idea of internal and external. It is true that every act is an expression of oneself, as a quote I quoted at the beginning from A.G. Yoshikawa. Some people could never stop themselves from using hand gesture when they talk because their body just had to go through the motion. Facial expression is the, an expression, a display of our inner emotion in its most genuine form. The emotion inside us that caused the muscles on our face to take action. A writer expressed through words, the same way a dancer expressed through their body. And does a photographer express through the camera? No. A photographer expressed through photographs and the use of photography. The same way a painter doesn't express through paintbrushes, but a painter expressed through mark making. The universal principle of expression from the internal to the external doesn't change regardless what art form you are doing. For a photographer, the camera being the main apparatus of expression contains most of the tools needed, such as shutter speed, aperture, focal length, exposure, noise, etc. But there are also other things that's available to us photographers and image makers, and that is the language of photography, such as camera angles, composition, proportion, hierarchy, negative space. And on top of that, there is the language of presentation, 
such as juxtaposition, scale, sequencing, collage, photo book, etc. There is almost infinite options of tools and combination of methods out there at our disposal when it comes to expressing our inner emotion, expressing your voice, your story externally. So tip number two is the idea of subtlety and intensity. It is as if someone is varying the pressure of pencil marks made on drawing paper, or the same way a designer varying the sizes of fonts or justifying a body of text. So ask yourself questions such as are you shooting your subject dead center or are you shifting to the side and controlling a portion of the subject that is concealed from the viewer's immediate line of sight. Usually when we want to express something quite clearly and quickly, we want to make an impact to the viewer. So usually we uh, end up using visual language that is quite impactful, uh, that has a certain maybe a, a shocking factor, but use bold colors so that it kind of shortens the time to express whatever we want to express. And the intensity tends to be uh, quite high. And when we want to present a different side of our subject, we want to be a bit more indirect. We want to control the variation of contrast and colors. We want to emphasize small differences so that things will slowly reveal themselves. Uh, and that is what we call subtlety. There is no right or wrong way to go about subtlety and intensity when it comes to presenting your subject using all the tools you have at hand, the camera, the functions, the language. The level of subtlety and intensity to present your subject is also a subjective expression of yourself as the creator. And so the ability to control between these kind of polar differences is what I would call a sensibility of the creator. Tip number three, facial expression. When I first started off my career after being an assistant was to work under a UK-based portrait studio and the majority of their business was targeting families. The biggest surprise to a lot of their customers was the no digital file policy within a digital photography age. Yes, it was jaw-dropping when this was mentioned every time, but still people were buying tens of thousands of dollars on framed photos and also photo albums, all tangible and physical. The amount of money that they spend on these photos are just phenomenal, but I'm not trying to brag about it because it has nothing to do with me. I was still working under a company. I was so interested in the key factor to drive them into purchasing. So there's a big difference between getting someone to take a photo for uh, a family that's looking at the camera and sitting still, everybody smiling, and a photographer who actually can generate genuine expression from the group of people and capturing that. Those kind of photos are actually considered quite uh, priceless and timeless in a sense that the customer would never be able to replicate. And the ability to precisely and clearly capture uh, every member with uh, the best expression and that particular candid interaction with a dynamic composition, the perfect lighting, all of these kind of combined is a very difficult effort to make and a, quite a particular skill set. I find it particularly difficult when I started to train photographers to do the same. And one photographer after another, it takes uh, at least half a year to a year to really be able to do at a certain level. When photographing people as a subject, sometimes a good expression overrides all the other things such as bad composition uh, or exposure. As long as it's still legible, expression rules over everything. The style of fashion, makeup, or hair can always be out of date depending on trends. But a good expression on a wedding photograph is always a joy to revisit. Now what is the role of the photographer, if I ask? So ultimately choosing which moment to capture and also which image to present back to the world through the editing process is your way of expressing about the subject. So if you're finding value in this video so far, I would appreciate if you can just hit like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell notification so you won't miss any future contents. So here's the plus one tip for you. For any filmmakers out there, I know that I don't talk about moving images that much, but I'm with you. And for this plus one tip, it's about time. In photography, this can also be playing with shutter speed. This can also be the moment of capturing, you know, anticipating that moment. You know, the example that I showed in the intro video is actually a uh, video I made for a ramen shop. I use it as an example because I was actually trying to use moving images and 
playing with uh, different elements of, you know, composition, camera functions, visual languages, and also the pacing of time as a medium to express. Time is the decisive factor into pacing and building up a progression of when to introduce what, when to jump to where, and how to shorten and lengthen in clips and also when to introduce silence or introduce a uh, lack of happening as a contrast for moments that's a bit more busy and chaotic. So you're using time to create different kind of intensity, different kind of subtleties and all expressing through a complete time frame. So a quick recap on the three main tips about expression is internal and external, subtlety and intensity, and finally, facial expression. Essentially, every decision that you make on how to photograph your subject is an expression in itself. So now that you have a little deeper understanding into the concept of expression, I want to challenge you guys to go out there and not to really photograph, but I think it would be more beneficial to challenge yourself to look at an exhibition, uh, look at a photo book or uh, a photographer's website and really dig deep into a few photographs that you find interesting and think about what were some of the decisions that were made by the author on how to express a particular subject and how it ended up being that final piece and how it looks like. In contrast, think about how would the same thing be uh, shot in an ordinary way look differently and how would it feel differently in that sense. I know this wasn't an easy topic to understand, so if you have any questions or comments, leave it down below. And to help you to master expressing through your photography even further, it goes without saying, being able to anticipate before your final shot would be the biggest superpower. So go check out this video that I've made on anticipation, and I'll see you over there. Peace out.